Thank you very much for being here with me. Please tell me your name and your affiliation. Hi, I'm Mark Blinder. I'm the CEO of Icon. What does Icon do? Icon was founded to help make blockchain easier to use. So everything we do is just making blockchain technology easy, both for businesses and their end customers. Um, it is definitely the case that for someone who is not technical, Bitcoin and blockchain in general are complicated and it is a huge bottleneck for adoption. Other companies spend millions and millions of dollars in order to make it easy. For example, I look at Coinbase and the Coinbase app and the Coinbase, you know, set of uh, products are good, are, are, are hiding the complexity well. So what is Icon's approach in arriving in that or going in that di direction? Yeah, I mean, Coinbase, yeah, they do a great job making uh, exchanging cryptocurrency really easy. What we do is done more on a B2B basis, business to business, and it's white label so that it can go inside an existing application. So if you have a business today and you wanted to add blockchain to the business, we can allow you to do that for your consumers without changing the user experience. So maybe they log in today with a Google login, a Facebook login, an Apple ID. We can allow that same login to hold and own a cross-chain wallet, right? So then that user that you already have that's already logged into your app now could maybe earn NFTs or receive tokens or pay in tokens because their login is now connected to a blockchain identity. How do you navigate um, a natural progression where some of these solutions start out fairly centralized, even if the end uh, utopistic direction is to be decentralized? Where are you at in that, that delicate balance today? That's actually a great question. We don't get that all the time, but basically the way we're handling it is we build all our products, right? That single sign-on product I was talking about, uh, it's called ID, and it's built on top of the Open Rights Exchange blockchain, the OR blockchain. And so at its very heart is decentralization. OR is decentralized. It's run by block producers all over the world that we do not control. And so it means the fundamental building block is owned by the user. It's on a public blockchain that's decentralized. And then on top of that, to make it easier for businesses, we have a centralized product that they pay for in fiat that's like a software as a service product. And so that's basically the way we handle it is like the core thing that has to be decentralized is everything else can be centralized for convenience and then over time, as blockchain technology continues to get more scalable and faster, we can do more and more of those off-chain things on-chain. The idea of a project and its mission matters. But what also matters is the ability to solve a business problem. What is the problem that you are solving? Yeah, I mean, the problem we're solving is fundamentally the user experience for blockchain, right? Making blockchain easy, if, if I have to put it in three words, that's it. Uh, okay, but is this something that is felt by your target uh, enterprises, the companies that you go and say, hey, we are a software as a service platform, we integrate with blockchain, we make blockchain easy to use, and they go like, we don't care about blockchain. Do they? The, the ones we work with do. So I'll give you how, a real how world How do you go and select those that do? Yeah, well, look, I'll, I'll give you a real world example. So uh, one of my all time, probably my all time favorite customer is a company called Republic. It's America's most prolific crowdfunding platform. Huge success story, uh, you know, unicorn company uh, in America. And they've done crowdfunding for equity for many years. Now they wanted to offer tokenized equity to their users. So all of a sudden they go from having this great user experience to this user experience problem of how are we going to have blockchain without screwing everything up, right? And so they work with us, with ORID, to preserve 
uh, their, their normal UX, but be allowed to offer tokenized equity to their users. And so that's where we come in when they kind of make the evolution from centralized to tokenized equities. Or we have another one, um, we work with uh, meld.gold, which is part of the Algo Mint family. And so it's a similar type of thing. It's a, they were a vertically integrated gold company that decided to spin off a tokenized gold company. So it's easy to trade, it's on the blockchain. There's a million reasons you want tokenized gold. It's traceable, all this good stuff. But the people who buy gold, they're not crypto people. They don't know what a private key is. They don't know what a wallet is. They don't want to have a wallet. They don't want to have a private key. They want to just log into an app that they use all the time, and now they can buy tokenized gold and have that benefit. Uh, and so th those are the kind of folks we usually end up working with. And, and these are early adopters, uh, just like uh, there is that uh, famous clip uh, of a morning show when uh, the two journalists uh, uh, semi-laughingly explain what is the at sign in an email to each other uh, when emails were still exotic. Uh, today we are at the beginning of uh, an adoption curve where it is not only about uh, geeks anymore, but the wider public still has a, an issue understanding what the various components are. Is it your opinion that just as today we cannot imagine a business that doesn't have email, there will be a point where we will not be able to imagine a business that doesn't have a blockchain component? I believe we will get there because I, I believe that Eventually, the entire global financial system, everything from sort of money to stocks to commodities to tokens to tokenized equity, all of it will be tracked on blockchains because it's a superior way to do clearing and settlement, to have greater transparency in the financial ecosystem. And so I do think all businesses will have to deal with it at some level or another. And at that point, it's very critical to us from our perspective, that there be inclusiveness. We talk actually internally about radical inclusion, which is something where blockchain can be easy to use and accessible to people anywhere in the world. And so that's a lot of what we work on. You know, you can even use our product with SMS over a, a phone, right? You don't need a computer. And so we want to make sure that people that have been left out of the current financial system aren't left out of the next financial system. Uh, an analogy that I like to, to make is how uh, double entry bookkeeping uh, 500 years ago evolved in order to avoid uh, the mistakes that would be easy to make when uh, you actually kept your book uh, uh, pencil and, and, and paper uh, because uh, you put it in the PL, you put it in the balance sheet under different accounts, and then independently it had to balance out. Now, with computers keeping track, the arithmetic errors don't occur. But we are still uh, uh, inherited and weighted down uh, by an accounting system that could be streamlined and could be made transparent. And entire professions like auditors and, and, and bookkeepers and, uh, and, and the way suppliers and, and, and vendors and customers and clients uh, interact and integrate could be profoundly revolutionized. Uh, how do you feel the future of ICON is going to depend in your ability not only to constantly improve and enhance your own platform, but to attract integrators and developers that on your behalf bring it to businesses? Or do you think you will be always direct to the next series of, of customers, the next wave of, of adopters? No, that's a great question. I think system integrators are a very core part of our future. It's something that we've already encountered a need for and we don't yet have a real partner program that would give us that bench of SIs to go to. Uh, 
everyone who uses our tools fundamentally is a developer. Most of our customers mean have developers in-house, right? So those customers are using in-house development resources, but many of them would like to be able to turn to uh, someone that could give an end-to-end -end solution. So they're not just using our, our platform, but also have a developer that can do all the custom work that goes around it, the front end, the other interaction layers, plugging in different things. Uh, and so it's a very astute question once again. Uh, it's something we'd love to do and we will do going forward. Uh, the, the opposite is also possible. Uh, mm, there are fantastic and fantastically successful platforms, for example, to implement um, a, an, an e-commerce module in your, in your business, whether it is Shopify or um, give me the other leading example that escapes me right now. Um, um, well, it could be Square or the one that I'm thinking of, doesn't matter. Yeah. There are, there are, it starts with an S, this one too. Uh, Stripe? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, yes. Stripe is someone... Stripe. Who... So, so the question is, um, could you become a module in something like Stripe where whoever adopts Stripe has the ability to tick it off? Uh, or uh, in something like WooCommerce, where WooCommerce and Stripe already integrate millions of uh, WordPress websites uh, deploy it uh, without even thinking about it. And then you come along and say, well, you can do the same using uh, blockchain too. Yeah, so we certainly look at, at, at Icon, we certainly look at ourselves as wanting to be like the stripe of blockchain, right? So easy for your developers to plug in. They can stick it into an existing application. And I think an application like Shopify is a great example of a place we want to be. We actually have something in the works with WordPress. So um, I think that is certainly in our future, but it, it's interesting. E-commerce hasn't adopted blockchain as quickly as other verticals, right? We see mostly finance and gaming use cases. Well, uh, there has been a wave of enthusiasm, uh, but there were several uh, roadblocks for this to consolidate and, and, and be sustainable. One of them was that a lot of companies see uh, the uh, radical transparency of blockchain as a negative. They don't want others to track a single address wallet uh, and, and see what the, their billings are across all of their customers. The second, of course, is that uh, with the high volatility, uh, the, uh, the merchants uh, would um, uh, convert immediately into fiat anyway. So they saw uh, Bitcoin only as a payment conduit rather than a store of uh, uh, value or a unit uh, of account. And uh, the third uh, is that the um, ability uh, to transact uh, until Lightning uh, gets uh, widely deployed is impacted by uh, the transaction uh, costs as well, not only on on, uh, on Bitcoin, but of course the gas prices on on, on Ethereum too. So, uh, I I think that there will be a new wave of uh, 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 blockchain e-commerce uh, enthusiasm uh, when these uh, three components get uh, mitigated or, or resolved. Yeah, well, I'm glad you brought that up. Our CTO, Trey, is very, very aggressive about protecting user privacy. Uh, it's something that is core to our values. And so one of the things we offer in our software product is the ability to spin up multiple public keys per user or per company. And so you can use that to uh, kind of protect against people being able to correlate, oh, this company has done this amount of business because they could have as many keys as they wanted and the mapping can be stored off chain for them uh, to protect their privacy. So that's a great question. And then getting to the second part of your question about 
you know, the use cases and the, the fees and things like that. I think for e-commerce, we're going to first see things like loyalty programs or VIP clubs will be the first use of blockchain rather than payments for all the reasons you just mentioned. But the idea of having maybe an NFT that gives you access to a VIP club for a certain fashion retailer or the idea that you'd earn uh, loyalty points that are tracked on a blockchain, that to me would be very low-hanging fruit, uh, very valuable, and very differentiated uh, for, for e-commerce, fashion, anything, anything like that. Well, uh, wonderful. Thank you very much for the conversation. Good luck with the next steps of uh, Icon. Thank you so much for the time. All right.